So let me welcome Susanne and Marie. Hello. Hi, Susanne. Hello. Hello, everybody. And um, I met Susanne online through a through an interview with uh, Rick Archer at Bad Gap, and also through her Facebook comments postings. <laughs> and I was I was just struck by a beautiful gentleness about you in yeah. you, Susanna. And thank you. <laughs> um, so I just felt drawn to inviting you into this retreat. Um, and I know you've been you hold satsangs and you do small group retreats and you do individual sessions with people. Right. Yeah. And so what you when you know when I told you about the title of the retreat, what you chose, the angle that you chose to mm. kind of look at is embodying love. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I guess for you the question really is, you know, how can how can love become embodied? How is it? How is it lived out in in everyday life? So maybe we could start with that. You yeah. Know, what what's <clears throat> What is it that that interests you in this, and how 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 is it for you? How do you live? How do you live love? Mm -hmm. Well, um, sure, yeah, good good place to start. Mm -hmm. yeah. To me, all of life is is the practice of of living love. You know. Um, there's there's nothing that's that's actually removed from from love. Mm -hmm. uh, even when we feel like we're away from it, when we've we feel like we've stepped away from from the the experience of love, you the truth is is you can't you can't really leave love because as you know, love is what we are. Love is what this whole world is. Mm -hmm. That's the every manifested thing comes out of love. So um, for me, the um, the exploration and the deepening of um, my life is in ever more embodying the understanding that this is the case, that this is the truth. Um, <clears throat> so the realizing that even when it feels like we've left ourselves and we've left the the the, the heart or we've left someone else in, in our hearts, just realizing that in truth you cannot leave anybody and you can't leave yourself. And closing and narrowing that gap of the understanding. You know, that it's just a, a felt sensation and experience that it feels like you've left love when it's, when it's not true, when it's really not true. Mm -hmm. That's, um, for me, that's the, the path of, of the heart. That's the path of my life. And that's um, where I like to meet others. And... Um, uh, I dropped in for a moment in the conversation you were having with Nirmala, and, and it, it feels to me like the um, topic of, of acceptance. You know, it's really hard. It's, it's impossible to talk about love and, and, and to not include acceptance with that. Mm. Because, um, having full acceptance of our lives, of our, of our feelings and our thoughts, and of other to me is the is the the movement of love. It's how love actually moves. 
Hmm, that's a, in, an interesting way of of putting it, you know, um, hmm. to to talk about love as a as a movement. And I guess you know, for me, it's maybe more than a movement of accepting. It's a movement of inclusion, including. You know, including everything. Like say, yeah. You know, when we're talking about uh, uh, just now, you know, earlier on the technical yeah. <laughs> challenges that I had, that you had. Yeah. When they're included, they're not a problem. You know, they're just part of the movement. Exactly. Right? Yeah, exactly. I think including um, inclusion is it for me is another definition of acceptance. Right. So, you know, we're using these words in order to try to explain something. Yeah. And, and and people will use different words. So, um, inclusion is um, is the 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 um, the mechanism in a way of really embodying the understanding ever more deeply that we are this love. Mm -hmm. That we are the all, all of life. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and since it's a Valentine's retreat, you know, we're, we're bringing in the topic of love as being, you know, speaking about um, that, speaking about awareness. Um, so, but you know, as you know, people use so many different words to express the totality. But since we're in these bodies and we're the the totality, what we are, awareness is manifesting through our bodies. We're going to be having a felt sense of what that is. And what is that? And the felt sense to me is is love, is the experience of love, the 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 movement of love as in the heart, the movement of love through through the through the body through the through the tissues you know it's it's um, ever more deeply this love can it, it it sinks in that this is really what we are that we are the unmanifested in form moving through life and one of the best words for me is is that this is this is love moving moving yeah mm. yeah <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's it's um, <laughs> it's it's beautiful. You have um, that that theme of movement. I'm I'm very struck by this. I've not come across it like this. And as you speak of it, it feels incredibly beautiful and very very mm. embodied. Because you know, movement is not possible without bodies I guess right yeah yeah and um, and realizing the love embodying the love as you say it's like it's not possible without the body so the body is just such a gift and it's such a gift and um, I think in this day and age we're starting to include more and more understanding about how the body is divine and um, and it's a divine manifestation of of of, of God or whatever word you want to use. <laughs> and then you know, as we deepen in that, as we gain that deeper understanding of that, uh, we start to see it in others. We start to see it as other, and um, we start to see it in in all things, in nature, in um, objects that we think normally don't contain life, you know, uh, plastic or cars or something, you know, all these things that um, we get to see actually more and more as this understanding starts to penetrate ever more deeply that we are the whole and that this whole is, is a beautiful creation. You know, we get to see that actually all of life is, and then um, know the outside is that as well. 
the inside and the outside. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And finally, to Mother Earth herself, <laughs> right? To know that this Mother Earth, it, the body of, of Mother, is our larger body, that, that we're one, that we're one. Yeah. And, um, and, and then we start to treat other from that place. When, you're, when, you, when you know that more and more, and that is the possibility, that is our po the potentiality of mm. we're more deeply realizing that we're the whole. And then that, that knowingness moves outward and, um, and touches all of life. Um, it's, it's interesting because, you know, in a sense, as love becomes more embodied, I mean, in my experience, it becomes harder and harder to not be in that state. You know, it's like the most natural thing is to be in that state of open acceptance. Right. And then there are moments when it becomes more contracted, but then, right. you know, it's like, you know you're not home, you know you're not, you're not at ease, you know, that there is a contraction. <coughs> and, and so there's a natural tendency to then want to just breathe and mm -hmm. you know open and relax and just find that natural openness again you know that natural gentle movement to whatever or however that then expresses, but there's a, you know, there's a certain quality to it that, that's quite interesting. can be sweet, can be gentle. I mean, it can be many things, but mm -hmm. there is something about that, you know, the, the essence of it that's, yeah, that's quite sweet. It's, um, as you're speaking, I feel the the uh, the kindness, you know, that you're talking about, mm -hmm. of uh, the loving kindness of touching on these uncomfortable places inside, you know, yes. as they arise, and and um, and that is, you know, part of what I was speaking about of closing the gap, of of having an understanding, and then um, realizing that everything is that, mm. and that includes. Firstly, you know, and ourselves it includes mm -hmm. um, the relationship that we have with these uh, parts that may have um, that want to come back home, mm -hmm. that want to be included, <laughs> right, and mm -hmm. um, and be brought back into the, the the truth of the matter, which it's that it is included, and that it is a mm -hmm. movement of love to include it. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. So, and that is actually, to me, that is um, the embodiment work. Yeah. You can have an understanding. You can have a realization, and it's uh, it feels really real. And it's, mm -hmm. but then you know, and, and mostly it's an understanding that happens in the mind. The mind finally gets to understand and stop seeking after itself. Mm -hmm. And then, as that understanding begins to deepen more and more. It penetrates all of itself. Um, mm. So the contractions that you're speaking about is um, uh, people more and more people are speaking about that. You know, using the word contraction, and and, um, and I think it's a good word. Um, at the same time, it's 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 good to remember that this contraction it's happening within yourself, right? And that, that it is yourself. It, it's not a disparate part. It's a, yes. not a, it's a part of you. So it's this 
that's arising that doesn't feel in alignment with the truth that you know inside. Hmm. And then the truth gets to close the gap and meet itself and and that's an act of loving kindness and without uh, even the the movement of judgment oh it shouldn't be there mm -hmm. you know that's another layer perhaps within the contraction yes right. I mean the, the judgment that it shouldn't be there is definitely a contraction isn't it and even, even if it arises out of a loving impulse which is to take care of this being that's ourselves, right? Mm. And to do the best for ourselves. And so we get all these ideas about how we should be and what we should do and what we shouldn't do. And, you know, you can see that in its essence it's a loving impulse, but it's a very contracted one. <laughs> and it's not very helpful. <laughs> No. It's much more helpful to to include that which we judge, you know, because it is there. I mean, it is there. So we can't possibly exclude it. Mm -hmm. Right. It's um, it's one of the main parts that 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 over time gets to be seen through. And um, it, it seems to um, hitchhike on almost every contraction <laughs> is, you know, this, the part of being, uh, feeling unworthy. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a very strong um, imprint in, in um, m most of humanity that we're, that we're unworthy of this love, that we're unworthy of... of um, being here, actually, being here, um, and this unworthiness, this feeling of unworthiness, it comes in when we're very, you know, starting very young, and it's often inherited from our parents and from the adults around us. Mm -hmm. um, this feeling of unworthiness, and um, so that's um, a very important, important piece to include you know, this loving-kindness uh, prayer to oneself, um, an ongoing meeting inside, um, you know, in uh, Buddhism they call it metta, you know, yes. metta, and um, they have different prayers out there that can help, you know, the Hono Onopono prayer, the Hawaiian mm -hmm. prayer that many may know about, a loving-kindness prayer that I practiced on myself for about a year, it just spontaneously arose inside to mm. do. And I noticed that it was primarily towards myself, towards these unkind thoughts or something. And I just, it was like a balm, like bringing a sweet balm unto yes. myself and saying, it's okay. Mm. And, um, and then that, that naturally begins to transfer onto the outside. This loving kindness um, that mm. it's okay. And how okay it is to be yourself and to be natural and to to make mistakes, <laughs> mm. you know, and to um, mess up and um, and all the things, you know, to not have it down perfect, pat, you know, the whole thing, just to. Oh, breathe a sigh of relief, you know, really, we can really be ourselves. I mean, ultimately, mm -hmm. to me, the spiritual journey um, is a, um, a process of learning how to be ourselves. And, um, you know, many of us go on the spiritual journey looking for ourselves, and, and then we get to discover as we become more and more integrated that the, the human, that this, this being here in these bodies with all these arisings that that's part of being ourselves and to mm -hmm. inclu include that and to yes. find joy in it and to and to actually appreciate these differences that that we have you know from one another um, hmm. yeah well it's actually it's interesting you know because as you're 
As you're talking, um, I'm reflecting on two things. Mm. One is that um, for me, the end of the searching was actually not intellectual. It wasn't so much. I mean, it, there was there's something inside. There was like a movement inside that stopped. Mm -hmm. You know, there was movement of searching that stopped. Mm -hmm. And along with that came a realization, which was, mm -hmm. this is it. Mm -hmm. You know, this is it. There's nothing else than this. Mm -hmm. And so I could no longer get away from myself because, of course, the seeking was also a getting away from, you know, whatever it was I didn't like about myself and whatever mm -hmm. it was that was painful or, you know, difficult. Or... And so, you know, I realized that stopping the search actually meant including myself. <laughs> <laughs> and um, realizing that there was nothing to got to be got rid of, that actually mm. whatever I, th I thought I needed to get rid of right. were things that I could include and that I could be kind towards, See. that I could embrace. Mm. And and then, you know, of course, interestingly enough, when we do embrace those parts of ourselves that we think we need to change, we have an idea that they, you know, they should be different. Mm. Um, love does become more embodied, you know, because we are mm. more in it. Right. with ourselves and then it can radiate out a lot more too right. because there's it's somehow it's just like more everywhere you know <laughs> it 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 um i mean you could put it in terms of cells you know it's like mm you know, more and more cells become reprogrammed. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, it's not my way of talking, but sometimes that's what's mm -hmm. said, right? You know, people talk about reprogramming. Mm -hmm. um, but there, there is there's real change that happens as a result of that loving embrace of ourselves. And it's a change that isn't restricted to ourselves, that, that really expresses in everything, you know. Like, I mean, I still have remnants of, you know, stuff, but, but on the whole, I'd say, you know, compared to what I was 15, 20 years ago, mm -hmm. I can see that there is a loving quality there that didn't used to be there. Mm, beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. It seems to be our birthright. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we we. It doesn't matter what age you claim you you reclaim your birthright. Mm. Yeah. Sometimes we. Many of us seem to get lost <laughs> along the way, and we forget that we're this love. Mm. And we forget how to be kind to ourselves. And um, and then it's a process, like you said, you know, an ongoing, an ongoing process, an ongoing movement, an ongoing movement. <laughs> and there are these different um, qualities of, of awakeness that that seem to 
reveal themselves, you know. You were speaking about for you how how it, how it was, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, for me, it was definitely a uh, like a yana yoga kind of path of mm -hmm. the mind. Mm -hmm. and, um, it just kind of spontaneously happened that way. It doesn't mean that the heart wasn't part of it um, or hasn't always been a part of it. But there was an understanding, um, a realization through the mind that the mind, mm -hmm. that the mind realized that it was that. Mm -hmm. It stopped um, looking for itself and everything. It stopped wanting to understand itself. <laughs> It was put. It was put to rest. Something was put to rest. Mm -hmm. And um, and it, it isn't so clear cut. It's not like oh the mind wakes up or the heart wakes up, you know. Or, and 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 also, I I do um, have the experience of the gut, the area around the stomach, being an, a center. And other teachers mm -hmm. spoke about that, and it's been spoken about for a long time. That's my experience as well, is that there are these different aspects of self that come to understand itself through the, through the vehicle, through this body. Mm -hmm. And uh, the heart waking up to itself is the one that gets to really have the embodied experience, that experience that everything is one. The mind can have an understanding of that, um, and it's not just intellectual because when the mind wakes up to itself, it's it's not the, it's not the intellect anymore. It's mind. It's like big mind. Mm -hmm. It realizes that it's part of the whole. Yeah. Right? You know, the 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 intellect could was definitely used in order to undo itself, which is a really interesting thing. That's what mm -hmm. inquiry is. You know, who am I and and all the things like that, the, the inquiry, um, mm -hmm. the intellect uses itself like a tool to, yes. un to undo itself and then suddenly it sinks into that which is beyond the intellect into, right, that is um, mm -hmm. beyond the gates, <laughs> the controller, you know, the one that wants to know and, 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 and seems to create this feeling of separation. Suddenly, this this um, koan, the the inquiry becomes like a koan, and the mm. koan can take you beyond yourself, beyond your sense of self, into where all things arise from. Mm. You know that that brings up an interesting um, an interesting question about practices. Yeah, you know, um, because often in the non-dual tradition, there's kind of, you know, practices are kind of, you know, waved away. That they're, they're kind of not really thought to be very useful because right. you know what's important is that you wake up and you realize, you know, it's instant. Mm -hmm. There's nothing. <clears throat> there's no movement towards waking up. And right. the, you know, the the um, traditionally, at any rate, in 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 many paths, mm -hmm. you know, there is this idea that there is a movement towards, you know, higher stages of consciousness. Um, you know, certainly in the yogic tradition and the Christian tradition. Um, you know, the like the the Ignatian. Uh, understanding of, um, I can't remember what it's called now, but, you know, there's this definite idea that <clears throat> there, there, there are steps even in mysticism and mystical experiences. Right. Yeah. And yet at the same time, you know, paradoxically, there seem to be practices right. that actually mm -hmm change us into a different level like you know like you say in inquiry is one of them right yeah you know I mean it's a practice you know you keep inquiring and 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 what it does is it generates kind of openings into a different level 
Right. And as you were talking, I was also thinking of Byron Katie's work, you know, which is a much more practical tool to inquire into tight emotional spaces, you know, judgments that we hold. Yeah. But, you know, paradoxically, what they do is by the time you come to the turnaround, everything's blown wide open. Mm hmm. <laughs> 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 I I used I used Byron Katie a lot because I I had a lot of judgment so that was very useful. Uh -huh. um, <laughs> <laughs> and so um, you know there are other practices, other heart centered practices, like you mentioned Ho'oponopono, for example, mm. and. Um, you know, others like metta meditation, metta bhavna, you know, the development of loving kindness in the Buddhist tradition, um, the Jesus prayer in the Christian tradition. Mm -hmm. So there can be, you know, my sense is in that, in that movement of embodying love, there can actually be very, very helpful and very um, precious yeah. Um, as long as they're seen as tools and not as the way to get there, mm. maybe, maybe that's the important thing. The it's interesting that you use the word movement because they are, you know, it like you said, it's paradoxical. It seems like you're you're doing something to move towards something, but really you're 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 not moving because you're because you're that because that is always that. Mm. So it has that kind of paradoxical aspect to it because if one is doing something in a linear sense. Yes. Right? Progression, all that stuff, time, mm -hmm. time gets brought mm -hmm. into it. But that is part of the, the paradox of being here. That is part of the paradox of being in a body and being timeless beings in the midst of impermanence. Yes. So, so marrying those two. And... Um, that's that's why where, where practices come from. You know, the, the the power of practice comes because the truth is is that we are, you know, living paradoxical beings, and um, so pra par uh, practices can be, as you know, very useful. Mm -hmm. um, the way that I I feel like the best way to use practices or is to have a practice arise out of itself, out of um, in, an intuitive response to what is needed because there's a, we each, each of us have an internal guidance system that is um, the, the, inner, the inner guru, the inner light that, um, that knows what it needs in yeah. order to undo itself so that, so all of itself can be on board and know itself as that because it is that as you know. But but these aspects of self don't yet know that They're, it's not realized on all these different levels, right? So these so the practices a practice can emerge um, from a spontaneous understanding what's needed. Uh, for me, the the Hono Hono prayer was not a, a something that it came organically, is what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Inquiry came organically. Um, so. And, and, and there's nothing wrong with, with, um, with trying out different things and seeing what resonates. Um, but what I, what I, where I see some people getting uh, caught and, and maybe going, you know, where they can go around in circles is if they're doing it from an intellectual point of view because they maybe respect somebody who uses that, um, that practice or it's a tradition that they get um, uh, uh, drawn to and and um, it and there's nothing wrong with that. But if it it part of this is like part of the whole journey of the spiritual journey and the living journey. You know, we can even mm -hmm. drop spiritual. Just the journey of living, of learning how to be here, is is starting to sharpen and develop one's own inner knowing. Mm -hmm. 
And so, uh, you know, and your inner knowing may bring you to uh, Gangaji, <laughs> mm -hmm. right? Your inner knowing may bring you to um, a Tibetan teaching or nature. You know, your knowing might say, sit, sit now at the foot of this mm -hmm. tree, you know? Yes. And, and so, for me, that, that um, muscle, learning how to use that muscle of, of, of how to listen to what's mm. inner guidance, that's actually part of the process of, of, of closing the gap between um, the mind and what's true, of closing the gap between the intellect and the heart. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The mind starts to more and more rest in the awareness and the understanding that the there's something else that knows, right? Yes. There's yes. something else that's guiding, that's guiding. And can you listen? Can you listen? And can you? And that's an act of loving kindness to give mm -hmm. yourself over to listening. I mean, that's mm -hmm. so so kind. And to follow, yes. then it takes courage. Mm -hmm. Earnestness takes earnestness, takes courage, takes willingness, and um, in the end, one can live one's life like that. In the end, the, the the that is life. That's like tuning into the current of what life mm -hmm. really is. It's surrendering to this current, flowing, mm -hmm. letting go, and. Yes. Um, and part of the current is making mistakes. Part of the current is, you know, like getting out of the current and it being caught in an eddy and saying, oh no, I'm caught in self judgment again or whatever. <laughs> and, you know, you just kind of go, whatever it takes. That's, and you listen again. How do I, how do I relax? How do I, you know, um, surrender again to mm. allowing? Mm -hmm. That's part of the learning process for me. That uh, then you become your own teacher. The teacher teaching is happening from within, and then you get to see also that um, teachings that come from the outer, you know, um, when they resonate, that they actually are one thing. Yes, totally. And then you get to get into the the whole interesting subject of transmission. You know, mm -hmm. mission being that we're transmitting, we are meeting one another, we're meeting ourselves. And when you know that, and there's a resonance, then it's like this current of of oneness just you know begins yes. to to sh reveal itself. Mm -hmm. Self and other. Mm -hmm. <laughs> It's it's beautiful, Susanna, because I really feel that. I feel that right now, you know, it's there yeah, right now. Me too. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm also feeling I'm feeling it here, and and I'm feeling and I'm aware also that we have you know guests watching, mm -hmm. and so I'm like, it's just amazing how much capacity we all have to be. Awake and aware to the whole, mm -hmm. <laughs> and mm -hmm. to feel our way into the whole. You know, feel our way into the hearts and minds of other, and know that we're we're just um, we're here together. Mm -hmm. We're here together. Mm. You know, showing up as we are in this moment. Yes, and actually, as um. You know, as we were meditating, I, I, um, there was just this moment where I relaxed so deeply, and there was um, there was just a sense that, you know, it's not just us and the people who are watching. There's all the support mm -hmm. for us, you know, that that's there, mm -hmm. visible, invisible. Yeah, and it's part of that loving movement. Mm. You know, it's part of that loving mm. 
unfolding of being, that unfolding of love, that there is all that support. And, you know, as a psychologist, I always have this kind of real interest in how that works in the mind. And, you know, mm. my sense is that when we're in survival mode and we're driven by some f f sort of fear, right? there's a narrowing that happens to perception, mm -hmm. you know? And, and so the narrowing creates separation. Right. Because the moment perception narrows, it doesn't include everything anymore. Right. <laughs> so when, when that narrowing, un, you know, undoes itself or is undone, right. then everything's included again. And, you know, that... Yeah. That includes that includes the incredible support that is there for us. I mean, at so many levels. Yeah, you can feel that too. Mm -hmm. And then, and then, the, um, when the awareness starts to open up again, and to include more, you know, as you said. Mm -hmm then that narrowing can be included. <laughs> mm -hmm. yes. Right? So that some narrowing can be included in the 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 blossoming, the opening of, of that awareness has of itself, you know. Um and I think that's part of like when you get the hang more mm -hmm. and more <clears throat> on a visceral mm -hmm. level. Mm -hmm. You're speaking about the visceral level of sensing into how much support there is and how inclusive everything is. Being aware of the people who are joining us right now, right? It's like the body keeps getting bigger. The yeah. body of awareness keeps getting larger and larger to mm -hmm. include more and more. And I think that's part of the awakening of consciousness itself. Mm. It, the, it gets to realize um, more and more what it is made of, what its capacity is. Mm -hmm. And so this narrowing down that could be happening to any one of us at any moment here, in, yes. this, in this moment. I can mm -hmm. even feel it inside. I can feel it inside of myself. This There's an aspect, a little aspect that's a bit narrowed. Mm -hmm. right? Just because here, we, you know, whatever is happening. Mm-hmm. And then, um, and then there's this ask. There's a there's it, and then there's an awareness at the same time of what's larger than that. Yes. And then what's even bigger than that, <laughs> and then yeah. aware that people are listening and aware of the room. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Aware mm -hmm. of. So that is what you get the hang of, is being able mm -hmm. to, to be, awake. They call it. <laughs> mm -hmm. Awake mm -hmm. within all these aspects of being, so that even when you narrow down to a pinpoint of the feeling like you're an I, a sense mm -hmm. of I, or narrow down to a contraction, say, mm -hmm. that that there is simultaneously something that's also aware of what's not that, what's not narrowed down, mm -hmm. and where where the loving kindness comes in is that they're equal. Mm. That they're equal in value, that they're equal in beingness. Yes. Because the truth yes. is that they're equal. They're both true. They're both I mean, true. They're both true. Exactly. So it's not like, well, yeah, the mind might say there's a preference because one feels better than another to feel more mm -hmm. you know, relaxed and, and um, uncontracted. There's a felt sensation that is pleasant. <laughs> mm. but, but actually, over time, my experience is, is that um, there's not a preference, that there's mm -hmm. this there's swimming and dancing in every single moment with mm -hmm. what's arising because there's been an understanding. We yeah. all have this opportunity to, under, to find out for ourselves about how that, that every, everything actually is, is uh, beingness, is made of the same stuff. 
And when you really know that, you put it into practice. Yes. Naturally. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, an interesting aspect that I just it just occurs to me to kind of throw in there too mm -hmm. is something um, that you know, the contraction and the opening, it's happening at an individual level, you know, at the level of individual consciousness. Right. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, it's also happening collectively, right? I mean, you know, there's, there's a, at the collective level, for sure, there's a movement, you know, over time, historically, into less contraction, more inclusion, um, more a realization that we're all one, you know, that there is no difference and how that how that embodies is in terms of inclusion or exclusion, you know, like at a national level, at the level of, you know, as humans, do we include animals in the scope of our awareness of being? You know, that these are beings too, they suffer, they, you know, they have joy. Yeah. Um, do we include, you know, do we include all of consciousness, even, even the people whose awareness is very contracted, who are very hateful, who are very violent? Yeah. You know, I mean, all of that. Absolutely is part of it, you know, all of that is part of that movement. <clears throat> the, the, what you're speaking about is, to me, the, what occurs, like that kind of um, caring consideration mm -hmm. you're speaking about, and considering others and considering all of life, animals and nature, plants, that to me that's an outward manifestation of when something's been understood within. Mm. So the more loving kindness and compassion and um, willingness to allow for things to arise within, and there's this natural bridge and we all we all do it. We all we we all do it because we're we're permeable. Mm -hmm. So we you know you can see um, all the time people who have all this love and care for for the animals. Right now there seems to be um, a really beautiful movement happening with people who are mm -hmm. who are just waking up to the fact that that sentient beings that we that we're all one. Yes. And why and and to to level the hierarchy. Mm -hmm. You know, and I think that's one of the reasons why uh, more and more people are interested in finding out for themselves what's it's, what is true, and and um, maybe going to a teacher for a while, and and that's fine. But in the end, to really, you know, do as the Buddha suggested, which is to be a light unto yourself. You know, because hierarchy is being leveled across the board, and there are still. Um, hierarchical models being played out, but they are unsustainable. Um, our planet is 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 you know partially in trouble because of this um, you know hierarchical models that are being played out, and people in their hearts like we're finding a meeting ground from the intellect and and from the intellect and our instinctual fear is finding meeting ground more and more in the heart, and the heart and this is my experience. The heart is um, the place where we're going to be finding our compassion and empathy and that place of, of thinking of life as a circle versus a, as a triangle in the hierarchical model. Mm. So in a circle, we are all important, right? Mm -hmm. We are all of equal value. And, um, and we get to learn about ourselves by leveling that playing field of the hierarchy we get to learn about how, you know, imagining. And maybe some of it's not even imagination. Maybe some of it is really sensing into how an animal, a certain animal might experience life. Mm -hmm. um, opening up our concepts of, of even ourselves because it expands us. 
-hmm. it expands us because, you know, uh, yeah, because limitation is limitation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, Susanna, I'm just aware of mm -hmm. the time, and yeah. I'd like to just take a moment to um, check in with with what whether people have any comments or questions. Okay. Um, so I'm just going to do that. You can take a little break while I'm doing that. Okay. Um, so, okay. There are two questions. Pema, Pema Shan asks, what about a feeling of having like a monkey on the back, as once was said about the heavy drugs addicted people, like your older self is there to get in the way even though you are in the process of unmasking? I'm not sure I understand that question. Maybe you do. Um, well, I'll just speak from what I think I understand. <laughs> okay, go ahead. <laughs> and hi, Pema. I know I know Pema from. He's from Italy. <laughs> he's a teacher, a, a school teacher in Italy. Mm -hmm. So, um, monkey on the back. I guess the 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 into what I'm sensing into maybe what 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 you're meaning, Pema, is um, this uh, sense of of something other something other that feels separate and mm -hmm. that has that has like an instinctual kind of drive. Yes. Kind of like leading like a taskmaster. Mm -hmm. You know, and overriding um, um, maybe the part of you that may want um, things to be different, maybe wanting to um, have less um, habits. I'm just kind of tuning in here. Um, like the heart, like the heart kind of moves aside and becomes covered over. The heart understanding, the heart wisdom, maybe even the the mind that wishes things were different wants to break free from habit. Um, gets overridden by this um, instinctual kind of um, false. Yeah, false. Something, something out. Something that has been made separate. And so I think that's part of the the healing, the the integration of um, allowing. You know, the the path of allowing is to. Um, welcome in as much as possible by stepping back and making and, and, and making yourself bigger, feeling yourself become larger to include all aspects of being so that this monkey, this, this instinctual drive or whatever it is gets to be included in the loving arms of something larger so on an energetic way, in an energetic kind of way, that's um, one way to hold it so that there can be a meeting ground of that which you know to be true. You know is actually a more loving, kind way of being to yourself, maybe to, to others. Your intention, your good-hearted intention and this this other thing that wants to have a voice it actually it actually <laughs> wants to have a voice and by se separating it out it makes that voice first of all not ever heard but also makes it louder and more insistent yeah so by including this 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 um, aggravated sense of self here 
and it actually has information. It's not like wrong or bad all by itself. When it when it's let when it's allowed to be heard and listened to, it can actually have information that the 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 heart can act, can hear and listen to if it allows for it. But part of the part of the journey here is to soften that desire to turn away from that which doesn't seem acceptable. Can I chime in there? Yeah, please. Mm -hmm. um, just along the same lines, it's like the tendency is to want the monkey off your back, you know, like the, that thing that's driving you, that thing that's possessing you almost, you know, right. because that's the feeling I get from that question. Mm -hmm. You know, when he talks about addiction, there's something quite heavy and dark that seems to be driving the person. Right. So, so the impulse is to try and get away from that or get that monkey off your back. Mm -hmm. And really, in my experience, the, the key is to actually see what's see the monkey, see, see the loving impulse in the monkey, like what, what's, what's the monkey, like you, you put that in terms of voice, you know, like what does it have to say, okay. um, it could also be like, what is it trying to do for you, hmm. you know, like often in drug addiction, I mean depending on what it is, you know, it can just be a search for peace that gets expressed that way. Yeah. You know, and when it's rejected as an addiction, mm. the search for peace gets rejected too. I mean, yes, it got expressed in a warped way and one that isn't ultimately going to get you there, but the search for peace is incredibly precious. Yeah, it's beautiful. You yeah. know. And and that needs to be that needs to be loved. It needs to be brought home. Yeah. <laughs> needs to be needs to be integrated. You know how else you're gonna get your peace? <laughs> yeah, I see the monkey being invited into your lap. You know, and and yes. put your arms around that monkey and yeah. <laughs> I hope that helps, Pema. <laughs> Questions? Yes, um, there's um, there's a quite a long one from Waking Dream. Uh, it's interesting that Susanna Marie mentions the area around the stomach as a center. I have for a while now been experiencing sensation in that area myself during meditation and inquiry. If I were to illustrate it, the sensation would look like a burst of light. Mm. I used to think it was a twinge of fear arising when I would question some strongly held belief. But the more I've explored it, I realize that it isn't fear actually, although I can't really give it any other name. Mm. Alivening, maybe. Mm. What was Susanna's experience of the awakening opening in this area of her body? That's great because you know I was going to ask you about what, what uh, you know, <laughs> about, talking a bit more detail about that center. Yeah, it it always wants to be heard in the end. <laughs> <laughs> What about me? You know, <laughs> the center down here in the in the gut area around the belly. You know, it's it's um, it's for many people. It's for the last thing to really want to be uh, woken up to and integrated because it's um, it's kind of a it's the place where ex existential um, fear and angst and instinctual um, arisings occur. Is right here in this. Mm -hmm. Our relationship to being in bodies and um, the impermanence of life is all located right here. Um, so there's the 
in the end, it's always it's going to be calling for for integration. Um, the heart the heart can wake up to itself and know itself as one in a love loving sense. The mind can have that understanding, but how about the body? How's the body doing? You know, how's the body relating to uh, its own impermanence? The fact that anything could happen at any single time. It's also the seat of emotion. Um, often, you know, the, the the watery world of of emotion, and uh, contractions can occur anywhere. But often, um, contractions. Um, the existential grip, at least, is felt in the in the stomach area. So, so there's you know often a clenching, a clenching there, and um, that can be um, felt into just like anything else. It's 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 inviting your attention to be felt into and to and see what's really true and see what's really there. There's a whole world there of uh, possible unravelings and relaxing into the knowingness in the body that that about what 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 we are in truth, that we are this love, that we are one, that we are beingness. How does the body meet that? How does the body move as that? Um, how does it meet itself in, how, you know, with other in relationship? So, um, you know, I have more questions than answers right now because I know we don't have a ton of time. But it's it's like the to me that's a that's a from that's still a bit of an unexplored territory. I'm in the midst of exploring that territory more and more for myself. There's, it's just um, where attention seems to be going um, more and more. And um, you can feel that it's unraveling based on how your body is responding in the moment with the fight or flight instinct. And, 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 and to not, again, make it wrong, to not go into judgment about, oh, there still seems to be fear there. Um, fear running. Well, what is that fear? So bring it, break it down into sensation. Is is like if I were to have a pointer of how to do this, it would be to break it down into sensation and and rather than just feeling, but go deeper, and go into the sensation, into the energetics of it, and 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 you know see what it has to tell you. Um, you know, I th I think Susanna Marie, that's what uh, that's what Waking Dream is actually speaking to, because when he says he used to, th or she, sorry, used to think that it was fear, but it seems to be more of an energy, and you know, yeah. characteristically, when when we let go of the story that runs the fear. Mm -hmm. You know, th there's only energy left. Right. Yeah. And the energy on in the contraction is actually usually quite. You know, there's a lot of energy there, and yeah. when when the movement of contraction is released, then it's almost like there's just all this energy that's bursting to. You know, that's just bursting. That's wanting to to come right. out. That's wanting to release, do something, express whatever. You know, and wanting to flow. Um, yeah, and it, it's like you know, energetically, there's 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 something that happens when the movement's no longer in the movement of running away or attacking or controlling. And when that stopped, then something, you know, it's like another shift that happens at that moment energetically. Yeah, I think it's a, it's a, it's um, it 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 has so much to teach us and reveal, and it's a pure creativity in the end. It's the center of creativity and pure potentiality. Mm hmm It's manifestation. You know, so um, 
break it down to sensation and energy, and then and then you can see what can happen with that. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. In a way, that's like the movement of love at its at a very, you know, <laughs> just as a, at a very energetic level. You know, that that's without. Mm -hmm. Words without concepts, without a story, it's just energy moving. Yeah, that's beautiful. Yeah. All the different faces of love. <laughs> <laughs> mm. We drop the stories, huh? Mm. What it's supposed to look like. Mm. Yeah. It looks like us. There's another comment, um, actually, two comments. Um, Dominic Rule says, listening to the inner guru, yes. A problem with spiritual practices like Who Am I or Byron Katie or anything is that they can be used to bypass the emotional body depending on the intention behind it, i.e., this feeling is painful, I don't want to feel it. How can I manipulate myself with some spiritual gymnastics? Mm -hmm. or tranquilize it with some prayer chanting or visualization, mm. etc. And then Wendy uh, responds to that, Wendy Ayat, I agree, Dominic, it's my experience that any practice can be used in this way as a form of escape or trying to get rid of what is uncomfortable. It is nonetheless possible to use them from a bigger perspective, i.e. knowing this tendency, and also with curiosity about what can arise during the practice. For example, using the Sedona method, I'm often amazed at the peace that can arise once the more challenging emotions have been welcomed. Yeah, the Sedona method is another... Um, Yes, yeah. another method that has that shifting, paradoxical shifting effect. You know, it shifts yeah. us out of contraction into a, 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 a welcoming, you know, an inclusion. Well, the the part. Sorry. Yeah, and 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 just to say, I mean, yes, it is true. It can be. You know, any practice can be used as a controlling mechanism to avoid certain things, avoid certain feelings, avoid right. uh, what is painful. Um, but that's not how they're meant to and be used. No, and, and that's not what we were speaking about either. But exactly, he's, he's right that um, anything that's that's not felt into in an honest kind of way mm -hmm. can be turned into um, uh, a formula yes. to, that that um, can can um, take you away from experience, um, and so that's a very good point. And I think that the 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 answer would be to stick with that which brings you deeper into experience of yourself. <laughs> yes. And so, if you're noticing that the practice that you're using is 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 taking you away, just know that just drop it right then. You know, drop it right then, or look deeper and see what is it that you're doing. Is there mm -hmm. something that is closer to your heart? Is there something that's so right there? If there's even meant to be a practice at all, you know. So practice, you know, can be in the moment of bringing one's attention to something. You could even label that practice. Like if you're noticing a contraction or turning away, and you're bringing your attention to that. See, we can put words to anything. 
-hmm. it can get down so close, you know, that you can just narrow the gap so much that there's actually practice is not even practice is just what's happening. You know, practice is just being awake, being alive, being aware, living your life, feeling. So yes. So practice could be good practice when it really arises as a movement of that love from the inside, right? Rather than an imposition right. or a kind of... Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, I've lost it. Yeah, from the outside. You yeah. continue. <laughs> I'm pretty much... <laughs> but you are me. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I let you continue. <laughs> uh. <laughs> are we doing with time? Are we are we good or? Um, it's eleven past. You know, I'd be wanting to come to a close. Yeah. That's just a lovely little comment from Bernard Guy that I'd like to read out. Yeah. Um, hi Bernard. He's a friend in Montreal also. Mm -hmm just like Wendy. Love is a movement, yes. Loving is. Living. Living loving. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry. Loving is living. Living loving. <laughs> Lo loving is living. Loving yeah. is living. And that's nice. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. So, yes. maybe... Is there anything that you would like to send us away with, Susanna? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would uh, say let's. Um, I just feel this beautiful laughter and smile in the heart, you know, just like in this area right here. It's like right in here, and I feel it's like an arising that's coming from the meeting with all of you, all of us here sharing the space together and I just want to say thank you you know for 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 um, just con your contribution I just we're all contributing yes. <laughs> and, um, and so um, I don't know you know like in my circles and stuff I would be like having a circle at the end and holding hands mm -hmm. you know and I can just imagine us all whoever's tuning in you know being in a circle mm -hmm. Holding hands and and just being just celebrating, you know, it feels like a celebrating of one another yes. and celebrating this, you know, precious time that we are spending together and are sharing, you know, mm -hmm. the same time here on this planet. Mm -hmm. So I know it sounds gooey, but it is Valentine's Day <laughs> or the day after. <laughs> it's Valentine's weekend. You, yeah, you're right. <laughs> so, so I'm just going to let myself be gooey, you know, <laughs> bite as a chocolate and have that yummy gooey center, you know, and I just, um, just celebrating with, with, with you all the, the yumminess that we are. Yeah, and, and also just, in, just, just really welcoming and saying it's really okay. It's really okay to be here. It's really okay to be yourself as you are right now. It's really okay. It's all included. It's all the word spiritual. Just like living is loving. Spiritual is is you. <laughs> spiritual is what's arising. Yes. Yeah. That's wonderful. Yeah, thank you so much for inviting me, Grace. Well, thank you to you, Susanna. That's, yeah, it's a lot of fun. <laughs> that was that was really oh, just a just a very yummy <laughs> conversation. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So thank you, and um, yeah, we'll we'll see you back in. Uh, Oh, what's that? About 25 minutes for the meditation leading up to the next session with Gina Lake. Um, 
and uh, if you dropped in on this on this video either on Google or on YouTube, uh, just to let you know this is part of an ongoing live online retreat, um, which is was the theme of living from love. And you can find out more about it by going to the website www.living-from-love.com and you can still register and you'll get all the links to the sessions and um, so mm -hmm. I hope to see you for the next one and thank you again to Susanne and thank, thank you, you too. Paul. Yeah, so my fun. joy. Yeah. My joy. Mm -hmm. And thank you to all of you who've commented and asked questions and contributed yeah. to the to the experience that way and also to those of you who were just there listening and participating that way and being there, being mm -hmm. there, mm -hmm. being your beautiful selves. <laughs> <laughs> so until shortly, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye.